Hi everybody, Bill1911 here. Hey, um, usually I do videos that are about um, entry-level stuff, like how do I clean this gun, how do I take it apart, stuff like that. Well, today I'm going to do some things that are a little different. Um, this video is entitled Spy Guns. I know, that's kind of intriguing. Well, two of the guns that I'm going to show you today were definitely used in James Bond movie, and I think the third one might have been, but um, one of the guns uh, was actually reported to have actually been used for some covert operations, and a very similar model to one of the ones I'm going to show you was actually used by a pilot named Francis Gary Powers, uh, he flew a spy plane called a U-2 spy plane over Russia and was shot down and they made a big public trial out of it and it was pretty terrible for Mr. Powers. Um, but he carried one of these that had a suppressor on it. So without, that, without further ado, hey, let's get into the guns because that's the neat part. Okay, these are our three handguns and you're probably wondering why I was holding that obnoxious looking silver gun stock a minute ago. Well, that's actually not just a gun stock. It's a takedown rifle that there's actually inside this gun stock a barrel, a receiver, and two magazines. Okay, it's a 22 long rifle survival pistol or survival rifle. Um, it's an interesting gun. So, and this was actually used in one of the James Bond movies. Now, not this particular gun but this type of gun. This is called an AR-7, and we're going to take it apart in a little bit and show it to you. Okay, so, the first one I'm going to show you is the Walther PPK. Now, this is a PPKS. Um, I already did a video on this to show you how to take it down, uh, how to take it apart, how to clean it, how to maintain it. Um, it's a neat little pistol. Um, it fires a 380 cartridge. Um, back in the day, in the James Bond movie, this guy from Q Branch comes in and, and they're upset with James Bond because he's carrying the old Beretta, okay, 25 Auto, okay, which is a pretty infinite gun. It, it just doesn't have a lot of guts to it. So they come in with this one PPK that is chambered in 32, okay, 32 Auto, um, and they use, of course, the metric designation of 7.62, uh, or, or excuse me, 7.65 millimeter. And they introduce it as, well, this is the Walther PPK, and it is chambered in 7.65 and has a delivery like a brick through a plate glass window. And believe me, that 32 does not have a delivery like a, <laughs> a brick through a plate glass window. Later on, they started chambering these guys in 380, like this one here. And it's got a lot more guts to it. Uh, 380 is sometimes referred to as a 9mm Kurtz. And it's actually a pretty good round. Um, I bought this gun secondhand. It was, it was pretty inexpensive when I bought it. Um, it's got a lot of scratches and a lot of beat up to it. Um, one of the problems I personally have with a gun, which I've addressed before, is that now it's very small, and that's a good thing because it makes it easily concealable. But I'm, I'm only 5 feet 8 inches tall, but I have very large hands for my size. A man my size, these are pretty big. So when I grip this gun, it's very uncomfortable for me to hold. It's a little better when the magazine is in it, because it has that little finger extension. I can just get my fingers on it, okay? So... Uh, it, it's okay, but the big problem for me is when I've got all of my fingers on it, this meaty part in the back of my hand here, okay, as the slide comes back, it catches that, that skin and that meat in the web of my hand. And another thing that happens sometimes is my hand will actually wrap over the top of the dovetail, that's this part of the gun right here, and when that happens, sometimes that hammer comes back with the slide and it'll actually pinch me. And so this gun tends to bite me, and it's just uncomfortable for me. Um, if you don't have oversized hands, this might be a really neat gun, a really neat option to look at. And this is the Walther PPKS. It's a neat little gun. All right, so on to the uh, high standard pistols, okay? These are a 22 long rifle pistol. 
This one I bought secondhand from a lovely lady by the name of Ressi, who back in the 50s actually competed in the Olympics. Um, I don't think she shot this gun because this was manufactured later than that. I think this was manufactured in about 1970. Um, it's a good gun. It's called a High Standard Supermatic, and it's, it's very accurate. I mean, it shoots really well. Uh, the sights on the back are not very big, okay? It is an adjustable sight, but it can be a little bit on the hard side to see if you're in low light conditions, okay? But this thing is a tack driver. If you're a bullseye marksman, man, this gun is a lot of fun. And it's 22 long rifle, so it's cheap to shoot. Now, one of the neat things about it is that the trigger on this gun is, is very crisp, okay? Um, it breaks clean. It's just a really nice trigger, and there's not a lot of take up on it. In other words, sometimes if you're squeezing a, a trigger, you pull the trigger way back before it goes up against, and then it'll break, okay? So this one isn't like that. It also has very little over travel. Now, before I squeeze this trigger, I'm going to open this dude up and make sure that there is nothing in that chamber. Okay, now I'm going to drop the hammer on it, and you can see, if I can show you, that that trigger doesn't move all that far back before it's up against, and then when it breaks, it pops clean, but it doesn't have a lot of over-travel backwards. Okay, so it's a neat little gun. All right, so on to the next one. This one is a Model 107 Military, okay? The grip on this is a little different angle, and the reason why is that they were marketing these guns to a lot of people that were bullseye shooters way back when, and that was the big circuit that everybody competed on. If you'll notice, the angle of the grip, okay, is about the same as it is on this 1911. Okay, this made it very comfortable to transition from this to the 22 caliber for small bore pistol marksmanship. Okay? So if you look at the other high standard, it has a much steeper angle on that handle, okay, on the grip. So a little something about the magazines on these things. The magazine that fits in this target pistol, all right, okay, goes right up in. And the magazine catches on the back, okay? When you pull that out, it pops out, you extract the magazine. This magazine on the Cite or I mean on the on the high standard supermatic will actually work in this military version, okay? And the reason the, the thing is that the magazine doesn't go into the handle straight like you think it should. It actually goes in at, a, at an angle and grows kind of at an angle through the handle so that it goes in like that. Now, this one will go in and latch, and it does work. It works just fine, okay? But on these 107 militaries, you're going to find on the bottom of the magazine, there's a piece of plastic in here, okay? Now, this piece of plastic means that you cannot use it in the old citation here that I have because it will not fit all the way underneath that little magazine catch on the back and hold it in place, okay? But it works just fine in the military model, okay? So, now, this gun um, was the one that I was telling you about that Francis Gary Powers, well, one of our spy plane pilots, uh, he actually carried a gun very, very similar to this. Um, I'm sure it was a 107 model, but I don't think it was quite like this one. One of the differences is that it was fitted with a suppressor on the end of the barrel. So, way back in the day, um, I want to say this goes all the way back to the 1920s, there was a company um, called Silencer that produced suppressors, okay, which is basically like a muffler. It just quiets things down. Um, silencers are not silent. Suppressors 
are not silent. They do make some noise. And even if they don't, when that slide comes back and pops that round out of the chamber, a little stiff, okay, when that round comes out of the chamber, okay, if it hits the ground on anything hard, it's going to go tink, 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 and going to make some noise, okay? So they're not silent. The other thing is that they are suppressors. They are not silencers. Silencer was actually a brand name. So if you hear the term silencer, it really isn't correct. All right, so from here, we're going to move on to that obnoxious-looking gun stock that I showed you. Okay, this is the AR-7 survival rifle. Now, one of the James Bond movies had one of these in it. It was not this individual gun, of course. Um, that one was black, and it was fitted with a little four-power twenty-two scope. Uh, you know, uh, the guy was sniping, I think, at James Bond with it, as I recall. Uh, been a long time since I saw that movie. Had Sean Connery in it, and he was actually young. All right, so... Um, the hardest part for me with this thing is actually getting this cap off the back, this plastic cap. That's your, your kind of recoil pad, which on a 22, you're not going to need a recoil pad. Inside the gun, inside of this stock, is the rest of the gun, okay? So this is the receiver, okay? Now, it has one magazine in the receiver that that's where it's kept so you can pull this thing out all right and you don't have a magazine in it. since there's no barrel on the gun right now you can see that there is absolutely nothing in the chamber so this one has been made safe all right so there is a second magazine right here inside this stock and the barrel is inside this stock okay it all fits inside so to assemble this thing the receiver fits into this slot that's in the front of the, the uh, stock, okay, the obnoxious silver stock, okay, and it has right here on the bottom this little screw that you just screw it tight, okay, and that's got your receiver mounted. Your magazine fits right back into the magazine well, okay, all right, your barrel fits on to this threaded collar, okay? Um, it's indexed, so it's impossible for you to get it wrong in where it goes. If you look, there's a little notch right here, like a little bump, okay? This bump lines up with this slot in the top of the receiver, and that's going to set your gun up so that you are in the right position. Now, one of the things that I want to show you about this is that this bolt, okay, has a handle on it. In order to put it inside the stock, you have to push the knob in on that handle. All right, one of the things I wanted to show you is when you put the barrel in this gun, it's kind of a pain in the butt because you got to kind of hold this bolt back a little bit with your thumb to get the barrel to go all the way up against its shoulder. And then you take this nut and you simply screw it on. Once you've got this screwed up against, like that, this rifle is assembled and ready to go. Okay? So, it's this isn't what I would say the highest quality gun that there ever was, but the nice thing about it is, if you're backpacking, okay, and you want to have a gun along with you, this is a rifle that you can disassemble, fold up, and carry it in, the, in your backpack. It's pretty small once you disassemble it. As you can see, it's a full-sized rifle, okay? It's, it's not a little toy, all right? It's 22 long rifle, so for most small game, this will do whatever you need to do to survive out in the woods. Um, it's functional. It's got a peep sight on the back, which is crudely adjustable okay you loosen the screw on the back and you move that rear sight up and down and that's about all the adjustment you've got on this thing um, but it does work okay 
And that's it for Spy Guns. We'll see you next time. And by the way, have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Hanukkah, a Happy Holiday in general, and a great New Year's from all of us here at Bill 1911 Incorporated. Hey everybody, Bill 1911 here. If you found this video to be helpful and informative, don't forget to like us and please subscribe and by all means come to visit us at askbill1911.com. Also, I want to talk to you about something that's very important to us and that's your safety. So please, don't try any of the things you see on our videos until you have thoroughly reviewed and understood our safety procedures. If you're under 18 years of age, do not try any of these topics without the express permission of your parent or guardian. Thank you.